Well, now, have you met an individual in your life and asked yourself, well, is this individual aggressive or are they greedy? The type of the formula that they are applying into getting money or working for their dreams, you tend to even question the procedures that they are using. Is this individual aggressive or are they greedy in terms of whatever they are doing? Okay, this is our two names that are actually used synonymously and people tend to confuse the two. Sometimes you can be very aggressive with life and people tend to call you, hey, you are greedy. I mean, you love money too much and all those kind of things. And there are some individuals who are outright greedy in this life where they can do anything for them to get this money even if it means them violating other people's rights and that kind of a thing in the name of enriching themselves so on this video i dare promise you by the end of this video you're gonna get the full information and define you and tell you whether you are greedy or you're actually controlled by aggressive and by the way guess what most of the people nowadays in this 21st century specifically in 20, 2023 a lot of people are actually tending to be more greedy now what are the signs and what's the difference between the two types? Now, here we have the aggressive. First of all, let's define what is aggressive and what are the signs of one being aggressive. And I'm going to use a very simple example. So if you're aggressive, in one thing, you usually do what? You usually do what we call, you count the cost. You count the cost and guess what? The, the problem is not counting the cost. You count the cost and pay. Pay the price. Pay the price. Price. For example, let's say you are earning 10,000 at the end of the month. You want to start yourself a business worth 30,000. So you already know that you need 30,000 to start your business. Now you have actually done what you've count the cost. And now the point of paying the price. Now how do you pay the price? Now out of the 10,000, remember you have to eat, you have to dress, you have to make sure that the things runs okay. And at the same time you need to save for you to make sure that at least you be able to do what? To pay the price. What price of getting the 30,000 that you need to start the business? Now what does it mean? It means that paying the price, it means incorporating the sacrifice. You have to incorporate what we call the sacrifice. And sacrifice here can actually be, number one, being mean. Okay, that's what people call it. And I'm going to quote it. Being mean, meaning not only mean to people, but also being mean to yourself. It can also be interpreted of being frugal to your life. Frugal or also being minimalist, meaning you're using less than actually you need. Okay, so if you're earning 10,000, you already know I have to live a life below 10,000 and I save at least 3 or 2,000. If I do so, let's say I'm earning that money at the end of the month, then in 15 months I'll get myself the 30,000. Yeah, I know sounds crazy, but that's the fact. Or maybe let's say I'm earning a K a day or 1,000 a single day and my aim is to get myself like it to a point of earning 30,000 or getting 50,000 or 60,000. So what you do, you sit down with pen and paper, you calculate, you realize, hey, I need a full one year and a half to be able to realize the amount of money that I need. Now, what do I do? First of all, you've counted the cost and again, you're paying the price. Price of what? You sacrifice. Sacrificing meaning that you appear mean to people, even to your family members, even to your partners. Number two, you not only appear mean to people, I uh, mean you not only appear mean to people or other different or external factors, you also appear mean to yourself. You are frugal, you are minimalist. You get the point? At that particular point, have you met as an individual who is out there, they don't even take a lunch. They just grab some few KDF, that's what we call them here in Kenya, and you take yourself for water and you're done. The lunch is it. Or in Kenya we say unainama, lunch in a pita, or you literally ignore the lunch, and then yeah, there you are. You've saved that what you could have actually channeled towards lunch. They say, hey, I ain't gonna drink the next one year, or I'm not gonna, you know, go grab those expensive coffees and what have you, because I already know the cost that I have to pay. I already know the cost and I have to pay that specific price. You're not cheating the process. You're actually doing what? You're following, you're following the process. Now, those are another sign, following what? The process for you to actually raise that target that you have out there. Whenever someone said, hey, if you need to be successful in life, you have to be disciplined, consistency, and you have to make sure that you sacrifice in this life. And sacrificing here meaning you're earning 50,000, live below 50,000 so that at least you can save the difference, invest the difference, get another passive income, expand your basket of income. Once you're now nearing or you're heading to the financial freedom or once you achieve the financial freedom, now you can shift back to what you missed in your life and actually go ahead and enjoy yourself and have a comfortable life. It's like you out there. Can you take an example of these two people? One individual is watering the plant, another one is watering the same plant. Not the, like the same plant, but 
the same plants of the kind but of a different location now with the moment the moment person a the plant brings forth a one fruit the person a takes the fruit and eats and enjoys the moment the other individual keep on watering the plant the plant makes one fruit doesn't eat keep on watering that makes another fruit keep on watering makes another and another and another so by the time he starts to eat or they start to eat there is already a plenty of the fruits to eat from that specific tree and this is the simple analogy that usually the rich usually uses have you ever met a rich individual and you ask yourself wow this guy has a lot of money at this particular point but they don't seem as if they're enjoying this cash probably this guy is at their 30s or early 40s they're not doing nothing they're just pumping in pumping in obviously when i say they're pumping in does not mean like they are living in a miserable life but if it was you to be given that money according to your own perception you'll be somewhere in mombasa or coast or maybe somewhere enjoying yourself and what have you but that is not what they are doing they are pumping in more money into the investment they're pumping me more money into all those areas so that they can create the financial freedom so by the time now they start to enjoy their fruits they know very well they never run out of them so that's what we call the consistency what we call the discipline and sacrifices when it comes to being a successful in life aggressive also in this capacity also it it means you being out there you do what you say you're gonna do you know very well you have to wake up early in the morning you have to exercise you have to be in shape because you are focusing on losing your weight or you wake up early in the morning you have to read at least you know two uh, you know uh, two chapters of the bible if you're actually there you know in enhancing your spirituality or maybe you are out there you want to read at least a book about finance and investments and what have you or you are out there you are watching news about investments or you are out there like you're grabbing one of my booklets about investments you are reading it, reading it and all those kind of things like you're being aggressive you're so much different from people and you actually stand out from the congregation and people say hey this individual and by the way when you become aggressive in life you tend to lose a lot of friends and again people tend to paint you names hey you are frugal you are mean or you are stingy and what have you that's how people perceive it at that particular point those are the signs of you being aggressive and again i'll repeat this individual they call they count the cost and they pay the price they follow the process procedure they don't cheat in between right they scale on what they're doing if they want to shorten the period of them investing right now the point is this now that's what we call being aggressive in life and trying the much as you can to achieve that thing out there right now let's just look what is being greedy now this being greedy and by the way before i even come here at this particular point there is an involvement of time time factor is actually respected in this particular point you respect time there is a duration that is needed for you to actually make that money. Now, here, number one, time is disrespected. Now, time. Time is disrespected. Disrespected. You know, you know what? They tell you, hey, I have 20,000. And these are the kind of the DMs I usually get, uh, for, you know, from the young people especially. They tell me, hey, you know what, good Joseph, hello, I love your videos. And by the way, I have like 20,000. I would like you to give me that an amazing idea that you're sure it's going to work and I want to make a million bob in one year. And I'm like, what the heck? If I had that idea, honestly, and probably I get my 20,000, I will be making that million. All right? You get what I'm saying? I'm not saying you cannot be able to make a, 20, a million from a 20,000. Well, of course you can. But again, does it fall under what we call the normalcy? Is it the thing that, I mean, you, you get what I'm saying? So these guys, they tend to disrespect time. And once you disrespect time, they tend to what? To cheat the process. It means you cheat the process. You cheat the process, right? They don't want to involve that process that is needed. And that's the time you tell them. If you try to sell an idea to uh, an idea of buying shares, you know, investing in a money market fund, investing in treasury bonds, investing in all those kind of, to a greedy individual, you will never ever have a table talk with this kind of an individual because what they are doing they really want to get that thing in the shortest time period in the shortest time possible using the minimal amount of money that you put out there they forget one thing we usually use money to get money for example i use a very simple example if today i give you 10000 i tell you hey make 10000 out of this 10000 probability of you making that money will be very high close to say 7% out of 10 but if i give you 100 shillings and i tell you make 10000 out of that 
well you can but obviously it's gonna take you a lot of time because you're gonna ask yourself what am i gonna do with this ten thousand how long will it take me to make that ten thousand and all those factors uh, have to be actually considered so the point is this we usually use money to make money all right and that's why you find uh, some countries like china they can be able to produce fish in large scale and they be able to leverage on that to a point whereby they can actually import those fish in kenya and sell it at a quite a cheaper price compared to a farmer who is doing so can you imagine this a fish that is coming all the way from china is far much cheaper compared to a fish that coming from the lake victoria or lake naivasha you can just imagine how crazy that it is because you leverage on the quantity you get what i'm saying so the point is this these guys who are greedy they tend to they respect time again they love to cheat the process again they love what we call you know what what, what we call like um you know, um, there's sort of a microwave, sort of a generation or something of so due to a lack of a better word. These are the guys who they want, uh, you know, to get things in a very high speed, you know, faster way. Like, um, and that's why you find this guy tend to be cheated a lot. You are told, and, and let me tell you one thing. This is where we usually have people who are doing what we call the gambling. Because you disrespect time, gambling, you want to make that, you want to take that a thousand bob that you have, that you've actually hustled very hard, and then you want to put it in that place, and then you get yourself like an order of what you get yourself, a hundred K, that's what you tell yourself, it can work. Now, what you're doing is that gambling, so you gamble, now, now the other thing, you're looking for what you call miracles, miracles. And again, I'm not, dis I'm not disregarding the fact that there are no miracles. Miracles can happen, and they happen a different way, but not the way you usually perceive it. You see, miracles, definitely, when, when you're looking for the miracles, actually you're trying to cheat the process. You see, you're trying to avoid all that what is needed of you doing it, controlling the controllables, doing that what is needed, counting the cost, and also paying the price, sacrificing, being minimalist, making sure that you invest on all those kinds. So you're just looking for that miracle thing just to happen instantly. Everything falls into place. You are wealthy, you have money, you have a car, and all those kind of things. And that's why you find a lot of people, especially with regards to gambling, they, you know, uh, they gamble around that where they have a lot big price because everyone believes, hey, I just can. I believe I'm lucky. I believe I'm lucky. And remember what I told you. Success is usually an intersection between two things. Number one, hard work. And number two, what we call the luck. When those two things intercede, that intersection area, that's where we call that is a success. Now, what we do in this life, you can never control luck. Nobody ever, ever can control luck. And this is where you find most of the people come with these funny things, you know, about spirituality and kind of funny things and tell you, hey, we can be able to control this. We can be able to control this because a lack in a man's hand or a human hand, you cannot be able to control it. The only thing that you can be able to control is how we perceive things with our brain and how hard we can be able to work out there. All right. It's so like a very simple thing. Have you ever met somebody who he has is very smart, but they do not have money? Meaning that individual is working very hard. They're trying as much as they can. It's like if you go to these big, uh, you know, uh, markets and you find these guys who are carrying those big loads and what have you. Those guys, they are working very hard, but they hardly have anything. It's why? Because, you know, be able to tailor down that hard work and actually leverage on it, scale down that one so that you can make more money. And at the, at the time, if luck hits you, then you can be able to make some Gs. Now, that is the difference. Now, if you're greedy again, they also do what? They have something that is called these guys they love what we call affluent life they love what we call affluent life meaning that anything they achieve they have to show it to people again they believe life is to be enjoyed as of now that's why they are calling some things called yolo yolo means you only live once these are the guys whatever they get they tend to squander everything they believe life should be lived per day and all those kind of a perception and again they tell you hey what if i save and i die because some people usually ask me all those kind of questions so if if you have this kind of an, an individual, you're actually controlling yourself or you're actually uh, earning from your something called greedy. Again, the other point that you find these guys are actually greedy, you find, have you ever gone to a place where you want to buy a product from a hawker? This guy, maybe let's say they are selling trousers or whatever the thing they are selling out there, they're just talking. And the moment you show an interest, you call them. They come to you, they give you an outrageous price. That product maybe let's say is worth like 600. The guy is just telling you, uh, this one I can give you at 1500 but anyway, Beyamusho is 1300 So you wonder, I mean, 
Come on, are you aggressive or are you being greedy? Because honestly, if a product is being sold at 600, if you tell me like 800, it makes sense. I would understand, hey, this guy is trying to hustle the 200. Maybe he doesn't, he doesn't have a stock. Maybe he's getting this stock from an individual who is actually selling at 600. So this guy is out here to find somewhere where he can be able to sell and make the 200 shillings on top of that. So, you see, you can be able to negotiate in a round and understand this guy is actually hustling and they're trying as much as they can to get something at the end of the day. But when they tell you 1500, you are like... You don't even know what you can even tell. And that's why you find most of these people are actually disregarded. They tell you, I'm selling this. You don't even look at them. Because the moment you show interest, they hustle you. And when they hustle you, they don't give you the real prices. Okay? Sometimes I tell them, hey, you know what? Don't just give me an outrageous price. I already know the price. Tell me the real price. And I don't mind to give you that 50 shillings or 100 bob just for free and make your day. And they're just there. They cling to the price. They cling to the price. To a point where buyer now disappearing. You're telling them, hey, I don't want that product. I'm going. And that's the time they tell you, okay, fine. Let a person. Meaning, like, bring the money in the end. You can be able to close the deal. And that particular point tells you, you're neither disciplined. Because you're likely to sell to one individual to your lifetime. You sell to one individual, they realize the truth they disappear you sell to another individual how long will you be able to do that before you actually exhaust your market and you reach to a point whereby you start blaming not only where you are born from the governments and everybody in that locality it is good to have that integrity it's always good to make sure that at least hey, make, 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 make somebody understand yeah it's true I'm hustling I'm trying to make some cash I'm trying to make the ends meet but again argue within the uh, what we call you know a marginal or what we call like a logic sort of a you know a margin or something of sort. So at that particular point, these people, they are selfish. At that particular point, you say they are selfish. They usually sell not on the basis of actually solving your problem, but solving theirs. What is their problem? Their problem is to make money. Your problem is actually get that piece of cloth or whatever they think that you want to buy. To them, they argue from the point of, hey, if I make this skill, I'm done. I've made some money. I'm so much, I'm very smart individual in this country and what have you and all those kind of things. So these guys, they are selfish and all those kind of things. And also these guys in aggressive, they are also selfish. But there's a difference between selfish between these two individuals. The selfishness in the someone who is an aggressive, they respect others. They don't cross the lines. They respect each other. And if you guys, you have to make a deal with an individual who is aggressive, they understand. Because let me tell you one thing. If you're aggressive, you already know what is to be aggressive. If you've counted the, the cost and you're actually paying the price, you tend to respect the other partner. You already know, hey, this individual might be in the same process as I am. So therefore, the selfish at this particular point, they make sure once you close the deal, you share up the whatever you agree that you're going to share in terms of the percentages, you're done. At this particular point, they tend to run away with that percentage. They never show up. They give you stories. They tell you, hey, I'll pay you next week and all those kind of things. And you find these people, most of them, in this Mijengos and what have you. If there are people who are so greedy, so selfish and what have you, are these guys who are working from the Mijengos? And uh, with all the due respect to the guys who are working the Mijengos, Anyway, that's the point. Guys, that is what it differentiates between a someone who is being aggressive out there and someone who is greedy. It's always good to incorporate what we call the aggressiveness rather than being greedy because in this particular point, you're going to affect a lot of people who are out there. Guess what, guys? That marks the end of my video, but not the end of me posting a video each and every day. So if you don't want to miss a video, make sure that you subscribe to this channel, like this video, turn that notification bell. If you'd like to get a booklet about investment, do this. It doesn't cost you anything is free of charge down below there on your right there is a small uh, there is a, i mean down the description of this specific video there is a number of mine you can get to that number and give me a call and they stock business for now it's a goodbye and see you in the next one